Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. I'm your host, Danielle Teal, and if you missed last week's show where I talked to Moto America Superbike champ, Tony Elias, you can go back and watch it again at nextmotochampion.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel and never miss an episode again. The latest issue of Next Moto Champion magazine is out. We've got Cameron Bobier on the cover along with a Sonoma photo review, the Instagram page, product spotlights, writer columns, and the fan favorite, the Umbrella Girl of the Month. You can download yours for free also at nextmotochampion.com. And now for the news. MotoGP heads to the Aragon Round in Spain this weekend, and the fight for the championship will surely heat up between Andrea De Vicioso and Marc Marquez. The two are currently tied for first in the championship with points and wins. However, Marquez currently sits ahead of Dovi due to having more second place finishes. Let's take a look at our MotoGP point standings heading into round 14. Superbike, Jonathan Ray said he had dreamt of winning two races in Portugal, and he did just that. He also took the first championship of the season when he locked up the Pirelli Best Lap Award with three rounds to go, as he has more fastest race laps than anyone else and is uncatchable in this sub-championship. Let's take a look at your current World Superbike point standings after round 10. American Flat Track is gearing up for the Lone Star Half Mile set to take place over the weekend. And since they've already crowned their 2017 Twins champ, all that's left to be decided is their singles champion. And right now, Colby Carlisle sits out front by 12 points with two rounds to go. Let's take a look at your point standings. Moto America had its grand finale over the weekend at Barber Motorsports Park. And what would a finale be without some fireworks? There were fiery crashes with Josh Hayes and Dave Anthony, history made when Superstock 1000 champ Matthew Skultz won the Superbike race, and champions were crowned. Superbike and Superstock had already been decided with Tony Elias and Matthew Skultz, but in the KTM class, Ben Smith took the championship in the final corner of the final race. In Superstock 600, Jason Aguilar did the double and took his championship. And in Super Sport, Garrett Gerloff is now your two-time and back-to-back champion. And we have him on this week's show to tell you all about it. Congrats to all the 2017 Moto America champs and to everyone for another successful season. Let's take a look at your final Moto America point standings after round 10. Now let's take a look at your Dunlop race highlights brought to you by Moto America.
one last bit of news. Over the weekend at Barber, Dunlop made a special announcement. Former MotoGP and Superbike champion Nikki Hayden was added to the Legends program, adding him and his legendary photo to the poster lineup. Dunlop said Nikki Hayden was one of the most beloved racers the world has ever known. His great morality, respect for everyone, kindness, dedication, and true love of racing will never be forgotten. Nikki's Legends poster is available for 29 bucks plus shipping through the Hayden Brothers General Store, with the proceeds going to the Nikki Hayden Memorial Fund. And that's your dirt. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. When only the highest level of quality and performance will do, it's TAW Performance. As the exclusive North American distributor for brands such as Brembo, Litec, and Marchesini, TAW Performance is globally trusted as the source for premium motorcycle parts. Kappa tire warmers for roto brake pads and Scorpion exhaust are reserved for motorcycle riders who want the best and will never settle for inferior products. These riders choose the trusted brands used in MotoGP, World Superbike, and Moto America. These exotic performance parts are now available on TAWPerformance.com. If you're looking for a little extra storage on your next day trip, then John Boucher and GV have something for you. From the motorcyclist to the scooter rider, from the short to long journeys, when it comes to protecting you, your gear, and your motorcycle, only one company can provide the security, ease of use, and elegance of Italian styling, and that company is GV. GV's known for their high-end Italian design, strong technological attitude, and knowledge of materials. If you're in need of a little extra storage space on your next ride, then GV's pair of 5-liter engine guard bags are a perfect and simple solution. This pair of 5-liter waterproof engine guard bags are a great storage option for occupying that otherwise unused space on either side of your motorcycle. They're made of a durable black TPU nylon material that's been high-frequency heat welded to guarantee that they are 100% waterproof. In addition, these materials are compliant with REACH regulations, which means that they meet environmentally friendly material standards as well. The pair of 5 liter bags gives you 10 liters total of additional storage space, which is perfect for a travel or roadside kit on one side and a day trip riding essentials on the other. The bag features the roll up closure system that is secure in place with a strap and easy release buckle. Universal in nature, these bags come complete with D ring straps to hook to all engine guards. Using the same strap, they can be mounted to the lids of other GV cases like the Trekker Outback and the Trekker Dolomiti. For added safety measure, a reflective print was put on the outside of the bag to increase your low light visibility. And when you're ready to transport your bags, they both come with shoulder straps that can be added for easy carrying. So if you're in need of a little extra storage space for your smaller items, the 5 liter engine guard bags are sold as a pair for only $125. If you need more information on this GV USA product or other products like this one, please visit us at GVUSA.com. While you're there, you can check out the GV options that we have available for your motorcycle and what they'll look like installed. Just look at the Virtual Bike Builder tab in the upper right-hand corner. Choose your motorcycle and the products you're interested in, and we'll show you what it's going to look like on your bike. When you're looking for the absolute best in adventure touring parts and accessories, you'll find it here at GV USA. All right, we'll be right back with our guest, 2017 Moto America Super Sport champ, Garrett Gerloff.
This is an actual slab of saddle gel removed from a saddleman seat. This is a picture of your favorite winding road in a glass frame, and it's part of our test to see how Saddleman Gel Core technology handles some of the jarring, harsh impacts the road can deliver. A glass picture frame would never stand a chance against a baseball bat, just like your tailbone doesn't stand a chance against that pothole you hit at 60 miles an hour. But when the impact is absorbed by Saddleman's Gel Core technology, your picture and your tailbone are protected. When you conduct the same impact test with the slab of foam you find in most stock and aftermarket motorcycle seats, it's easy to see that when it comes to absorbing impact, foam will fail. For the ride you deserve, it's Saddleman Seats with Gel Core Technology. And we're back and this interview is brought to you by Bike Master. He had a breakout season in 2016 and went on to take the Moto America Super Sport title. And now for the second year in a row, he's the number one plate holder in the Super Sport class. He's a longtime friend and returning guest, Garrett Gerloff. Garrett, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be back as uh, the champion again. <laughs> right, congratulations. So first and foremost, congratulations on another title. Um, I'm gonna ask you a really cliche question though. You were ready, willing, and able to take the championship on Saturday, but you had a big moment a big get or a big uh, off track excursion rather. And to ask the cliche question, what were you thinking in that moment? I mean, you had a lot of work to do to get it back. Tell us about it. No, I know, trust me, I was, uh, okay, pretty much what happened is that it was like the perfect scenario where JD was just kind of blocking my brake marker the, the whole straightaway because I was kind of passing him at the same time and just totally lost the braking marker and, and went in way too deep and just, couldn't slow it down. Knew it as soon as I went to the brakes that I wasn't gonna make it and and uh, just had the thing sideways, trying to get it slowed down so that I could go through the gravel and get back on track, you know, safe. Um, but I knew my team was freaking out probably when I ran off the track and I was just shaking my head, laughing to myself. Like, of course, this is something that I would do. <laughs> um, but I was able to keep her up on two wheels and get back on the track and really just tried to uh, have some fun the rest of the race because I knew that as long as I finished like 13th or higher that I was uh, gonna be the champion. So, I mean, I wasn't too worried about it. Of course, I wanted to go try to win that race because that's the way I, I wanna win a championship is, is on top, on the top step. Um, so that was a little disappointing that I couldn't do that, but at least I was able to work my way back up from I think 16th to third. So I still got on the podium and, and uh, that's better than getting like fifth place and then them having to bring me up as champion and stuff. I wouldn't have wanted to do it that way. So at least I got on the podium. There you go, very good. So you did say though that there wasn't uh, much pressure going into the weekend, not for the win anyways, obviously for the championship, but what was the what was the pep talk like going into weekend? How did they tell you to approach it, your team? Uh, well, me and my, uh, my riding coach, Garrett Willis, we kind of just went into it as like, hey, you can pretty much do whatever you want as long as you don't throw it down the road twice. Like, I could, I could throw it down the road one time and still finish the second race and win. So um, I honestly went into it with absolutely no pressure. It was probably the first race weekend I've had in a long time where I felt like I could just ride for fun and, and ride because it was, uh, this is what, what I wanted to do. Like, I don't know. When you kind of turn professional, everything becomes more serious and more job-like. But I felt like I was back in the, the old amateur days, just going to the track with my dad and having some fun. So it was, it was a fun week in that, in that respect. Which is interesting, being that you're going into it fighting for the championship, that you would be so relaxed uh, on this final weekend. But l last year when you took the championship, it was long overdue for you. Um, between injuries and just, you know, you being such a strong rider and we had such high expectations for you. But now having a second year in a row and taking the title, does this really solidify you as a championship contender and title taker? No, for sure. That's, uh, you know, last year wasn't a fluke and I didn't want people to think it was because um, I know I kind of struggled a little bit the last half of the year, but it was just a big monkey on my back that I had never won a championship before. And so I was a little nervous probably uh, halfway through last season to until New Jersey last year because I had never been in the position to, to win a championship. And so I, I, I kind of let my head get in the way of my riding a little bit last year. But this year, it was nice just knowing that I had already done it. And like, I felt like a lot more relaxed this year and, and more free to just go out and ride. And I knew that I could, uh, if I could do that, then I could go and win the championship again. So 
there was a lot less uh, there was a lot le less pressure this year, honestly, for me. And and um, things started working really well about uh, you know halfway through the year. Before that, I had won a couple races, but like at Laguna Seca is when I kind of really started to uh, to be riding good with uh, and working well with my team and everything. So um, yeah, I, I think it solidifies me as uh, the re like a real guy, a real deal. And looking forward to you know what what we might do in the future. I'm not sure yet. Well, you said last year that you finally started to remember how to have fun again racing. So, and obviously a championship helps that. But did that carry over into this year? And do you think that's what uh, helped you notch 11 wins this season? Uh, yeah. I mean, I had a ton of fun this year. I had a lot of fun last year. But really, um, having fun on the bike is is important. Yeah, and and that's what I really realize exactly what I want to do with my career and what I want to do with, with my life and everything. And so I kind of was able to find more of a, a direction with, with everything. And I really have been working hard to set steps and goals every year so that, you know, I can try to uh, reach those goals and then I can make new ones. And um, I really just want to keep moving forward in my career. I, I was on the 600 for six years, I think. and. And kind of in that in those six years went through like some tough times uh, in like my personal life and, and in my racing career so um, really just I learned a lot from those and and I've kind of found that path again that direction on where, what I want to do with my career and, and where I want to go and without that I was kind of just racing the race but now I'm racing for more of a, a reason more of a purpose and and that definitely helps when I'm on the track okay so now you've touched on it a few times and I think it's time we go there What's the plan for next year then, or what do you what do you want to do, or what do you think you're going to be doing? Well, I don't know exactly what's happening next year, but I mean, I'm not quiet about it. I want to ride a superbike, honestly. Like that's uh, that's really what I want to do. And Yamaha has a, a great program with uh, the 600, with the 600 team and the superbike team. It's kind of like the perfect stepping stone for riders coming up through the this series and. I've been uh, on the 600 for a while, like, like I said, and I think it's time for the next step. I feel like I've uh, proven that I can go out there and win, you know, no matter the conditions. I, I won in the rain and the dry this year and had uh, some good races. And so, I mean, I know I can do it. I, I know that's what I want to do. And that really would be like the next step for me. And it's not going to be the last step, but it's going to be the, the first step to uh, achieving the things I want to achieve. Well, okay, so aside from winning championships on the 600, do you think you're ready for the big bike? I mean, how much experience or time do you have on a 1,000? Yeah, for sure, I feel ready for it. I, I don't have a lot of time on a 1,000, to be honest, I don't. Um, I've probably ridden 20 or 30 laps on a, on a real super bike in total, so it's, it's not a lot of experience, but I was able to uh, ride the current super bike two years ago in uh, 2015. And I got on it, and the thing felt like I was right at home. Everything was perfect, like the way the bike was set up. I, I think I rode Josh Hayes' bike, and the way he had the, the bike set up was perfect for me. And I was able in uh, six laps. They, they only gave me six laps, but in six laps, I was able to go uh, just as fast as I had gone on my 600 that weekend, which um, maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but but in just six laps, like I was able to, to get up to speed really fast. And I think I was uh, like 1.5 seconds off of the full position time. So for me, I'm a bigger guy. It's a bigger motorcycle and, and faster. And, and uh, I feel like I can really utilize everything that the, the bike can offer. And, and I think it's going to be uh, a good pairing if it's something that could Well, we look forward to seeing what happens with you in 2018 if you do make the step to the Superbike. But before we get too far removed from it, what do you have to say about the new R6 from this year and the, and the major changes? Yeah, the new R6 this year was amazing, honestly. Like, uh, with, with the new bodywork and the new front end that we have, which also comes with uh, new brakes, and then really the, uh, the new electronics that we were able to use, you know, with the, the stock, the stock electronics pretty much were, were awesome. Like we were able to do a lot of things that we couldn't do with the, the previous bike. And with uh, with the bigger brakes, that was a big help in um, getting the bike slowed down, which wasn't our strong point really last year. So all in all, it was, uh, there was a lot of improvements that, that really helped me out, you know, cause I'm a little bit taller guy and it had uh, better wind protection for me. So I was able to get some more top speed out of the bike and really just kind of felt at home 
it, it made the bike a lot more like the, the R1. And like I said, the R1 felt good a couple years ago. And, and this new R6 feels just like that. So it was just kind of like a perfect combination. And uh, we really kind of got into our stride mid-season and just haven't looked back since. Well, that perfect combination led you to another championship. So uh, I guess the only thing left to ask is how did you celebrate? <laughs> haven't celebrated yet, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I guess I did. I went to have uh, dinner with my family and some friends and um, part of the team that was able, or part of the team that helps me out and, and everybody. So that was pretty cool, but uh, nothing too crazy yet. We have the banquet tonight and then uh, and then after that, we'll go uh, just celebrate a little bit. And, and you're heading off to Spain, right? Heading to Spain, yeah, also. <laughs> I forget about that too. Tuesday morning, or tomorrow morning, I'm uh, going to uh, Spain to see the Aragon GP. So uh, pretty excited about that. I have some friends coming with me, so I'm gonna go over there and uh, kind of see what the, the real deal is like, the real uh, championship. I'm, sure, I'm sure you'll do plenty of celebrating over there, Garrett. And then how do you plan to spend your off season? You'll have a lot of downtime to think about uh, the upcoming season. How do you plan to spend it? Yeah, definitely. Um, so right now I have like uh, my place in Texas, where is, uh, which is where I stay most of the time. But I think uh, this off season I'm probably going to head to the West Coast, where there's uh, a lot of people to train with, a lot of a lot of racers, a lot of tracks and, and things like that. That I think that's probably the best uh, move for me to make right now is to go that way, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, test a little bit more. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm still on the Yamaha team, hopefully we can test a little bit more this off season and. And uh, we do that in California, so I think it would be just kind of a good move to, to be on the West Coast. And then once the season starts, I'll go back home and, and kind of just uh, do it all over again. Very good. He's an avid cyclist, too. He's on the Next Moto Champion Cycling Team. You can follow him on Instagram. He just clinched the 2017 Championship in Supersport. He's our good friend, Garrett Gerloff. Follow him on Instagram, at Garrett Gerloff, right? That's it, at Garrett Gerloff. Very good. <laughs> I'm looking for pictures from Spain. I want to see you celebrating, guys. It's Garrett Gerloff, number 31, still the number one, though, for the second year in a row. <laughs> Garrett, have fun in Spain, and congratulations on your championship. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Since 2005, Driven Racing has been making metal that moves you. Made right here in the USA, Driven Racing products are known for their design, innovation, and attention to detail. What started as a chain and sprocket company has grown into a global brand that is sold through a worldwide network of dealers and distributors who make these products available to Driven fans everywhere. the next moto champion moto minute where we get you caught up to speed on the latest and greatest motorcycles on the market in a minute today we're looking at the 2018 bmw hp4 race limited edition motorcycle bmw says this bike is pure emotion this bike is the first bike in the world to offer fully framed carbon fiber frame and fully carbon wheels and with 215 horsepower and weighing in at just 322 pounds, BMW says this bike is a big bike lover's dream come true. With 999 cc's of power, this water and oil cooled four cylinder, four stroke inline engine was built by hand in Berlin and is claimed to be an enhanced version of the world's superbike bike. So what else does it have? It has an HP Race Shift Assist Pro with shift direction inversion, giving you clear feedback at every gear shift, a six gear close ratio transmission, also adapted to World Superbike specs, FGR 300 upside down fork, and TTX 36 GP spring struts made by Olins that are also World Superbike spec. 
Brembo GPR4 PR brake calipers, which are MotoGP grade, and the list of accoutrements like the Acropovic exhaust system, carbon fiber woven rims, and titanium screws goes on and on. So what else makes this bike so dreamy? With only 750 of them made, each handmade by a specialist and fitted with a number sticker for authenticity, you're gonna pay for it. For only $78,000, you can have all of this and more. For more information, visit BMWMotorcycles.com. And that's this week's Moto Minute. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at Woodcraft-CFM.com. Thank you, Garrett Gerloff, and congratulations again. We'll have more for you, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and American flat track coverage. Don't forget to join the over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each Saturday. We look forward to a great season with you, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion.